Good morning. This one has it all. U.S. restrictions on China that boomeranged on us. China's ability to innovate around the restrictions that we put on them. How their relationships with BRICS countries have locked up supply chains for everything important. And how scientific breakthroughs now accrue to their factory sector and to nobody else's. In 2011, China was officially banned from the International Space Station project. The ISS involves over a dozen countries who've sent astronauts into space. That includes Russian cosmonauts. Earlier, NASA officials believed that China's space agency, which was then only five years old, did not have enough experience to contribute anything meaningful. Then came IP questions and national security concerns, and Congress passed a law in 2011 that closed the International Space Station to China, and that holds true today. So China built their own space station, the Tiangong. Space.com has a good workup on the technical details of the Tiangong, and we'll link to it in the comments. The Wolf Amendment makes it nearly impossible for China to cooperate with the ICC, so China's only alternative was to build its own space station. That's the backstory to what these researchers here have been doing on the Tiangong. One experiment in particular did not seem very special, seemingly a mundane experiment, whereby astronauts in zero gravity shot a laser at some alloy particles and took notes about what they saw. Now the significance of it has been realized by scientists on the ground who created a niobium silicon alloy that can revolutionize aerospace. The new alloy is lighter than nickel or titanium and has three times the strength at high temperatures, which means that aircraft engines made with it will achieve speeds and efficiencies that are impossible given the materials we use today. The Chinese scientists faced a problem in that the process takes a very long time and results in fragile samples. But a group of researchers at Northwestern Polytechnical University solved those problems with a rapid cooling method. That university is also under sanctions from the U.S. for their advanced applied science work on hypersonic aircraft and missiles. Those sanctions resulted in even more support for the college from the Chinese government and military which includes, apparently, that they can talk directly to the astronauts on the Tiangong and tell them to keep doing the experiments, whether or not they seem to the guys up there like it's a waste of time. The payoff is here. If this alloy can be mass-produced, China will enjoy massive military and manufacturing advantages, and this is proof of how a country needs its own space station. Off we go then to find out where the world's niobium is. Turns out Brazil has more than eight times as much of the rest of the world combined. There's our BRICS problem again. Brazil is the B in the BRICS, and they have essentially all the niobium in the world. The U.S. Geological Survey says we have not produced any niobium in the United States since 1959, and we are... Bottom row, 100% reliant on imports to meet demand, which runs over $400 million per year. But China has recently reported its own massive discovery of niobium. This report predates the published research from the work on the Tiangong. It confirms that geologists discovered new ore reserves in Inner Mongolia that contains niobium. The steel industry is where most of the demand for niobium is now, and steel with less than 1% niobium is stronger and lighter than steel without it. It's used in construction, energy pipelines, and aviation. Niobium is also a semiconductor, which makes it valuable for use in particle accelerators and MRI machines. Summing up then, niobium is crucial for the most advanced applications in medical devices, applied physics, and energy. China just discovered a new one for hypersonic aviation, 
which only happened because the restrictions on Chinese access to our space station impelled them to build their own. Then we put sanctions on Northwestern University, which convinced Beijing to turn the keys over to their space station, over to the guys at Northwestern University, who are obviously doing such important research that it scared the Pentagon. Meanwhile, Chinese diplomats, who probably don't understand material science any better than I do, were busy with BRICS conferences and investing Belt and Road money into the places that have the raw materials, just in case China's own geologists didn't find any niobium in Gansu or Inner Mongolia. Turns out they did, but sure is nice to have friends in Brazil anyway. This is Chongchun in Jilin province. Be good. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. No man can serve two masters. He cannot serve God and money. So do not be worried about your life, what you will eat, or what you'll drink, or what you'll wear. 